Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be wiring up the S10. I've got a Holly Terminator X Max ECM in complete harness, so we're gonna connect everything to the engine and transmission and make the proper connections to the chassis harness with an end goal of finally getting power back to this truck. It's been a long time coming, but that means we are so, so close to being able to fire it up and get this project wrapped up. If you missed any of the previous episodes, I've got some links down in the description box below, including a link to the entire build playlist so you can see just how far this truck has come. Of course, since the last episode, I've made some more progress, so before we get started, let me catch you guys up to where I'm currently at with the truck. The biggest change is the front end. I got everything reassembled, all the panels are lined up and bolted down for the last time. I'm really digging how the new color theme of this truck is coming together. We've got GM Oxford White over Toyota Pre-Dawn Gray, and we put a very subtle metallic flake in the clear coat, so when it's in the sun at the right angle, you can see it shimmer just a bit, and it'll tie in some of the red elements of the interior. As far as the motor, as you guys have seen in previous videos, I've pretty much completely blacked out the motor itself, and I wanted the engine bay to match, so I had the core support and inner fenders powder coated a satin black, We've painted the insides of the fenders of satin black. Way, way early on I showed this, but the firewall is coated in a textured material called Spectrum from Second Skin Automotive Insulation. It's a sound and heat deadening material, and that was painted satin black after it cured as well. So pretty much all black with just some subtle touches of polish work. An unexpected changeup I needed to do was the accessory drive. I ended up going for a high mount accessory drive setup from Holly because unfortunately the mid mount setup that I put on in a video a while back does not work with an LS swap in this case. I'm using the entire Holly swap system right down to their frostbite aluminum radiator and fan package and unfortunately the mid mount accessories sit down a little too far and too far away from the motor. The mid mounts are really cool because you know it was satin black, very compact because everything bolts to the water pump housing but clearance is clearance and when you don't have a lot of room to work with having an extra inch or so really makes a big difference. Now the high mount accessories are what Holly actually recommends for doing an LS swap in these trucks and they offer three different finishes. You've got you know a raw cast, you've got a satin black and you've got the polished. I ended up going for the polish just to give the engine bay a little bit more contrast and I'm really glad I did because they almost perfectly match the Jet Hot Classic Polish coating that I got on the headers. But we've got the alternator, you know, high output alternator, power steering pumps down there. I ended up going for Holly's remote reservoir setup. I've got all the lines plumbed for the power steering and I've also got everything plumbed up for the air conditioning system. Another really nice thing about their high mount setup is that you can actually order an R4 compressor, which is the same style of compressor that this truck would have originally come with from the factory. So these are factory S10 43 V6 AC lines, slightly modified and tweaked and stuff, which I think are gonna work out really, really nice. I've got the factory condenser already reinstalled. So the only other thing that I really have to make um, would be the transmission cooler lines. So, you know, really not a whole lot of stuff left to do other than the wiring. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. One more thing and then I promise we'll get started. I wanna give a big shout out to O'Reilly Auto Parts because they've been a supporter of my channel for quite some time. I also want to give a special thanks to the folks at my local O'Reilly because when I ran into these fitment problems, I was having trouble finding the right parts just because of you know all the supply chain issues and whatnot and somehow somebody found what I needed in some warehouse somewhere. I don't really care, they made it happen and I'm so thankful for it. That's why I love going to my local O'Reilly the people there, they just, they get it. They're always willing to help, not just for regular maintenance stuff, but when you get yourself in a bind like I do very often, they're there to help, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot. 
First things first, we have the main power and ground for the ECM. There's also a 40 amp inline fuse built into the power wire right here. This needs to be connected directly to the battery. So we're gonna get this routed and find the best position to place the ECM. This mounting spot's gonna work out just fine. There's just enough space between the core support and the battery for it to tuck in. Plus with the battery installed, you'll barely see it. The harness is gonna run underneath the battery tray, out and around. Now for the main harness. We've got two big plugs here that go into the ECM. There's a 40 amp relay for the injectors and fuel pump and a corresponding fuse for that. And then it goes into everything else, basically all of the sensors and other plugs that attach to the LS engine. Thankfully, everything is easily laid out in here. So even for somewhat of a novice like me, you should be able to plow through this no problem. One thing that the Terminator harness did not come with is a coil pack sub harness set, which if your harness is in good shape, you can modify it and use it accordingly. Holly does sell them if you wanted, you know, to just not fool with it altogether, but my truck harness was in really good shape. So as you can see here, I've already pulled the harness off of the driver's side bracket, and now I'm gonna do the passenger side. Fortunately, I found out once I started pulling off all the old tape off that one, GM actually left enough slack with these wires here to position this plug towards the rear of the cylinder heads, which is more ideal with the Terminator harness, just where the connections are located. So I'm gonna pull this off, strip it all down, clean it up really good, re-loom it so it looks just like the Terminator harness, so I'll be able to save some money and it's gonna look great. Aside from the air temperature sensor, I've got all of the sensor connections finished. There's some nitty gritty wiring that still needs to be done. We've got to run the power wire to the fuel pump and start getting the powers and grounds sorted and start tackling the chassis harness. So this big old rat's nest right here is the harness that wraps around the front of the truck and connects to all of the lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some cleaning. We're gonna get that routed so at least a big chunk of that's all finished up and we don't have wires hanging all over the place. Now 
radiator. This is a frostbite three row aluminum radiator available through Holly for swapping an LS into a first gen S10. What's really nice about this is that it comes with brackets to basically bolt it in the exact same spot as the factory radiator and you've got this extended water neck right here to make hose routing a whole lot easier. There's also a steam vent port up top so you can get that all connected. These are the two part numbers for the upper and lower radiator hoses I ended up getting. I just went down to O'Reilly Auto Parts and rated their shelves till I found some that were close and then just cut them to fit. So worked out pretty good. I think it's gonna be a tight fit, but we're gonna get this thing installed. It's gonna work out nice. Truth. Yeah, buddy, that's what I'm talking about. I'm still a ways away from calling the wiring finished, but like I said at the beginning of the video, my goal was to get power back to the truck, and that's exactly where I'm at. There's still some loose wires from the S10's factory harness that need to be cleaned up and connected appropriately, and of course, tucking and routing the rest of the Terminator X harness. I still have to install the transmission harness and basically just go through everything tooth and nail to make sure nothing's rubbing, everything's away from heat, and of course, that everything looks good. I just have everything kind of loosely laying everywhere just so I can you know, make sure there wasn't a short in the system or anything like that. But I ended up making all brand new uh, power and ground cables. I ended up doing what they call a big three upgrade because I do plan on some custom audio stuff going into this truck. So I wanted to go ahead and make sure my powers and grounds were all upgraded appropriately. So, you know, everything's kind of hidden except for that wire right there. And I've got some extra body to frame grounds down, you know, towards the back out of the way. But I will say, as far as fitment, of all of this stuff that I ordered from Holly, you know, the frostbite radiator and fan setup and the high mount accessory drive, it is amazing how tight everything is. Like it's really, really tight, but there's still ample clearance between that upper coolant neck and the water pump pulley. Very, very impressed with how well this stuff fit up in here, so. Um, yeah, that's a big sigh of relief. A cool thing I discovered with plumbing the power steering system is that I was actually able to use a high pressure line from a C5 Corvette to, you know, be the high pressure line in this swap. So I've got this remote reservoir set up from Holly. It's very similar to how a C5 Corvette is set up. You've got the remote reservoir on top of here, a return line that comes out from it and down to the steering gearbox, as well as another line that goes down to the power steering pump itself. As far as the high pressure line, I was able to use one from a C5 Corvette and it hooked up to everything as if it was perfectly made for this swap, which is awesome because I thought I was gonna have to make myself a custom line and really there's not a whole lot of room in there. But the way that C5 line was shaped, it threaded directly into this power steering pump, you know, bent it around accordingly and screwed it directly into this steering gearbox. I was so happy. So just a little FYI, if you're thinking about doing an LS swap in an S10 and you've got this style accessory drive, C5 Corvette pressure line. The truck is also really starting to take shape now. We went ahead and put the bed on this morning and I'm telling you what, seeing this thing actually put together for the most part really gets my blood pumping. For the bed, I ended up going with a spray-in bed liner that I picked up at my local O'Reilly Auto Parts called Raptor. Now the overall finish of this stuff largely depends on the quality of the spray gun that you're using, as well as the technique. My buddy Joe ended up spraying all of this for me and it laid down really, really smooth. 
From experience, I can say that this stuff is very durable and it certainly cleaned things up a bit. Um, you know, with the bed on the truck, I can get the final alignment done back here, make sure it's all bolted down, of course. I can install the tailgate, the rear wire harness, get the taillights in, so it's really gonna come together quick. Fast forward a good bit and I've pretty much gotten through the majority of the wiring on this truck. Some things have to be loomed, some things have to be cleaned up, but all of the main connections are in place and I've actually already powered up the Terminator system and everything has worked out really, really good so far. Aside from doing that wiring cleanup, filling it up with fluids and making transmission cooler lines, this thing's ready to start up. This was my first time installing a harness like this and I'm pretty proud of how it's come out so far. I got carried away with making progress off camera just because I really wanted to focus on what I was doing to make sure I didn't make any major mistakes. And you know, it's worked out really, really good. That being said, I wanna make sure I'm highlighting things that you guys want to see in the videos. So as far as future projects and wiring content is concerned, if there's anything in particular that you guys really want me to focus on and include in the videos, let me know in the comments below. The biggest hurdle I've had to overcome with doing this swap is just the fact that there's not a whole lot of room to work with. It's like trying to cram 10 pounds of stuff in a two pound bag. Certainly wasn't near as difficult with doing the, um, you know, the small block swap way back when, but a lot of it just has to do with all of the extra wiring that has to be routed around. I tried to make this as clean as I could with the knowledge that I had, and I'm still not quite done. I wanna make things look a little bit nicer, but regardless, there's just a lot of stuff that has to go in here and all in all it turned out nice. I also went ahead and installed the tailgate. Got all brand new hardware in there so it feels factory fresh. I've also been working on doing a complete LED exterior light conversion. I've already finished up the back now I just got to keep working on the front. I'll run through the basic setup of the Terminator system in the next video before we fire this truck up. Basically, you've got this little touchscreen display where you can access everything from live data to tuning parameters and so much more. This is actually a self-learning multi-port fuel injection system, so once it gets up to operating temperature, it basically self-learns to tune everything based on your driving habits and stuff which is really really cool of course you can go in and put in custom tunes and all of that stuff it's a very versatile system I have already run through the basic setup once because I wanted to get the fuel pump to prime and double check everything which everything seems to be working just fine so I am pumped well, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because, of course, there's always a lot more content where that came from. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. In the next video, we're going to fire this thing up for the first time and we'll just be that much closer to wrapping up this project as a whole. It's going to be awesome. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.